only to copy one. The Bible says, looking unto Jesus. We are meant to look up to Jesus. We are meant to copy Jesus. We are meant to imitate Jesus. Praise the Lord. And the Bible said that Jesus was obedient and submitted to the Father. He was submitted to the parents in Luke chapter 2. The Bible tells us that Jesus was submitted to the parents. As Christians, we are supposed to operate according to divine point of view. We are supposed to operate according to divine point of view. Which means God's word defines our reality. Amen? Amen. God's word defines what? Our reality and serve as a filter through which we interpret our experiences. It serves as a filter. The word of God serves as a filter through which we can interpret our experiences, our encounters. And what it does, it will bring us into an alignment. It brings us into an alignment with God's will. So when you have divine point of view, when you have divine viewpoint in all matters, in all matters, that point of view makes the word of God your reality, not facts. Amen? Facts change. Truth does not change. Truth is a constant. Amen? Truth is a constant. And therefore, we may decide to behave according to tradition, according to what we heard, according to what we were told. But let me tell you, only divine viewpoint matters in your life as a Christian. Only that. They say this. They say that. They say that. Did you ever wonder who they were speaking to? <laughs> Amen. Amen. They said this. They said that. They said that. Who were they speaking to? And so you can go and carry what was not meant for you. Praise the Lord. Take for instance. Take for instance. You went to a counselor, a marriage counselor, and he has had a bad time in his marriage. And then he listens to you. And then, after a while, he said to you, my brother, women are all the same. Old. Let me tell you, if I tell you my own, you know your own is nothing. And then he begins to advise you from his experience, because that's what he knows. Amen? Amen? But the Bible says that we are carriers of divine nature. We are carriers of divine nature. It is only a divine viewpoint that produces divine nature. Amen? Amen. Only. Only when you can see things through the eyes of God. When you can see things through the eyes of God. When you can see things through the word of God. You will act as God will act in that situation. We talk about divine nature. We talk about divine health. We talk about divine prosperity. We talk about uh, divine peace. Everything to do with divinity, we talk about it and we claim it. But then we don't claim divine point of view. It takes the point of view of the word of God to generate, to generate the blessings that come from divinity. Don't see things like human beings. Don't speak like human beings. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Don't speak like your parents used to talk. 
Don't talk like your brother, your friends used to talk. Talk the way God talks. We are called to be a mouthpiece of Jehovah. In case you have forgotten, last week in the Daily Dose, we read that cursing with your mouth is a misapplication of your mouth. When you curse with your mouth, you are misusing what God has given to you. God has given us this mouth to proclaim his praises and his glory, not to curse people. Praise the Lord. And there are people that curse without blessing. All they ever know is curses. 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 They curse. They curse. They swear. They regret. They sigh. They sorrow. And so if you come around them, they will pollute you. They will pollute you. Do you know, we read from Genesis chapter 16, Hagar, an Egyptian maid of Sarah, was on the run because of the harshness of Sarah. She was on the run. Amen? And the Bible said, the angel of the Lord met her somewhere and said to her, Sarah, sorry, Hagar, Sarah's maid, where are you going? Where are you going? She didn't have a destination. Amen? Amen? But she knew where she was coming from, but she didn't know where she was going. Many of us know where we are coming from, but we have no idea where our conduct will lead us to. You have no idea that this character you are manifesting will take you to a destination that you have not paid for. Because every journey leads to somewhere. Every journey leads to somewhere. And so when the angel of the Lord met Hagar and said to her, you are pregnant, where are you going? She said, I am on the run because Sarah, Sarah, the wife of Abraham, she has been harsh with me. She is harsh with me. And the angel of the Lord didn't comfort her. The angel of the Lord didn't sympathize with her. The angel of the Lord said, go back and submit. And in one translation, I said, go back and submit to her mistreatment. Go and continue suffering. Go and continue suffering. But if you will endure, I will ensure that you will enjoy. Many people want to enjoy without enduring. You look for a marriage, you are looking for a self-made man, already made man. You want somebody that has four by four, by four by four. Amen. Amen. You want somebody that is rich and well-educated, well-made, and all that, and all that. Have you asked yourself, where is the source? What is the source of what you want to be associated with? Praise the Lord. And so, the Bible said, the angel of the Lord spoke to an Egyptian maid, spoke to an Egyptian maid, and she went back and submitted to Sarah. And the word of the Lord speaks to us. We are a new creation. We are a chosen generation. We are a holy nation. We are called to his name, to him and to himself alone. And we hear the word of God. And Hagar, the Egyptian, obeyed faster than we that are new creation. Does it make sense? He says, let every soul be sub subject to authority. He said, let every soul. He didn't say some. Paul was writing to believers. He says, submit, Peter says, submit yourself to every ordinance of man. Every institution. He says, submit yourself. He's not only talking in church, talking about church. He says, submit yourself to every ordinance of man. Why are Christians so lawless? And then God said, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Let me tell you. The problem with lawlessness is that God will not bless it. God will not bless it. And in my study of the word of God, I have seen that without submission, there will be no prosperity. Look at the case of Hagar. It was only as she submitted that God blessed her. Oh yes, God blessed her. Only after she submitted. Amen. Amen. Look at the case of Jacob. Jacob submitted to Laban. And in submission, even though Laban mistreated him also, how is it that before you get into the prosperity, there will be a mistreatment? 
You know why? Because you need to be disciplined. You need to be disciplined. Hagar went back and submitted, and God blessed her, and she prospered, and she flourished. Jacob submitted to Laban. Laban was harsh too. Laban was unreasonable too. But Jacob prospered. Prospered. Prospered under Laban. What about Joseph in the house of Potiphar? He was mistreated also. But he submitted himself to the house of Potiphar. And what happened? Joseph prospered and flourished. What about David? David submitted himself to Saul. And Saul wanted to kill him. And he still called him, my father, my father, my father. Even when he had the opportunity to kill him, he didn't touch him. But called him, my father, my lord. Why do you want to kill me? And David prospered. Can't you see the pattern of God in the scriptures? Why don't you have the viewpoint of Jehovah from the word of God? If you submit to those that are nice and gentle and kind and loving, anybody can do that. There's nothing difficult about that. Praise the Lord. Anybody can submit to a nice person. That's true. Anybody. But the Bible did not call us to submit to those that are nice. First Peter 2 said that we should submit even to those that are harsh and wicked. That's what the Bible says. The Bible said we should submit to those that are harsh and wicked. You complain too much, that's your problem. And so the lessons you're supposed to learn in submission, you didn't learn it. You keep moving from post to post, from area to area, because you wouldn't be under authority. Have you thought about it? Have you thought about it? Destiny, destiny only comes to those that endure the process of the word of God in submission. Let me mention to you again, New Testament examples of submissions. The young Jesus, our Lord, our Savior, he submitted to Joseph and Mary. Luke chapter 2, verse 51. Jesus submitted to his parents. The Bible says he was subject to them. God, the Son, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, he submitted to God the Father. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 27 to 28. We can read it there. Number three, the church submitted to Christ. This church is submitted to Christ. This church, Jesus is the head of this church and the head of all his church. The church is submitted to Christ. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 22. Believers are called to submit to God. We should submit to God. Hebrews 12 9, John 4 7. Believers submitting to God. Number five, believers Submitting to their pastor. Believers submitting to their pastor. It's in the word of God. First Peter 5.5. 5, Hebrews 13.17. You are not just to come to church. You are to submit. You are to submit to your pastor. And in that way, you are protected by the anointing. In that way, you are covered by the grace he carries. Grace cannot cover somebody outside it. Grace can only cover those under it. Praise the Lord. Christians are to submit to government authority. Romans 13, 1, verse 5. Titus 3, 1 to 2. And 1 Peter 2, 13. We are called to submit. Submit to government authority. We are not called to criticize Tinibu. We are not called to criticize Biden. We are not called to criticize shows. German Chancellor, the French uh, uh, president, American president, we are not called to criticize any president. We are actually called to pray for them. And you know what we did? We copied the world. We copy what the world say. We say what the world say. We have no evidence. We say, we judge, and we are called. We do what God didn't ask us to do. We are not called to judge those in authority. We are asked to pray for those in authority. How did we get it so wrong? We go as far as accusing them, calling them names. You say, this governor is a thief. The president is a thief. The president is a murderer. Where did you get these things from? From when did you begin to lie? Even the Bible says you should not lay false accusations against your neighbor. You don't, you, 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 the word of God does not have a hold in your life. 
You speak carelessly. You speak carefreely. You say it's your mouth. It's your right to speak. It may be your right to speak. It may also be your right to receive the judgment. Why do you talk about what you don't know? Have you read the book of Jude? It's only one chapter. I encourage you to go and read the book of Jude. It's only one chapter before Revelation. It talks about the punishment that go, comes to those that speak against those in authority. Punishment. God's punishment. Many people are suffering because of their mouth. Not because of the devil. When you judge others, you will also be judged. When you accuse others, you will also be accused. What do you gain by accusing those you don't know? You say that Tinubu is the reason why things are expensive in Nigeria. You say Tinubu is the reason why fuel is expensive. He is the reason why this is expensive. You know, you know, you know, you know, you know. Where did you get that from? Because he's a president. Do you know how much you contributed to the state of the economy? Oh, you don't know. No, you don't know. You contributed to the state of the economy. You want, to, you want me to tell you how? You want me to tell you how? You contributed to the way Nigeria is. Ask yourself, what did you do last week? From Monday to Saturday. What did you do? What did you produce? No, what did you do? What work did you do? How much did you get paid? What service did you render? No nation gets developed without productivity. Are you hearing me? No nation gets developed without productivity. No nation develops with 419 and Yahoo. When the future of Nigeria is engaged in 419 and in Yahoo, what a sad future the nation will have. No, what a sad future the nation will have. No, what, what, what is sad? And so you blame Tinibu for your inactivity. What is the connection? You were sent to school, you left school. Hello? You were sent to go and learn a handiwork. You stole your boss money and ran away. You were on the run from your boss, you were on the run from the school. Hello? Handiwork you don't have. Qualification you don't have. And now you become an expert to judge economic matters. In your ignorance. And when those that know what I try to teach you, you say, don't tell me that nonsense. Meanwhile, you are the one talking nonsense. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You go to where they sell newspaper, you don't buy, you read for free. <laughs> you impoverish the guy that sells newspaper, you rob him. But you stay there for two hours, you read free papers that is here. You impoverish him. He was there to sell. He is not a library. And you talk about Nigeria. If that guy that sells paper does not pay his rent, you are one of the reasons. No, do you understand the reality? You wouldn't be under authority. You wouldn't learn how to do things well. No, you want a quack. He said, don't, 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 don't. I don't want it to be done. Just show me sharp, 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 sharp. I want to know how I can make money. All your emphasis is how to make money. As long as your emphasis is on how to make money, you will be a failure. Because your mindset should be to serve, to give something, to give something. As long as you, you know, let's say that you cook something. You, 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 you want to cook and sell. Your motive shouldn't be to make as much money as possible from the food. Offer the best food possible. It is possible in the first six months you will not make profit. 
But God, seeing your faithfulness and your prayer and your titan and your offering, and so you sell the best food, and people in your neighborhood, they don't appreciate it. They don't like it. They say it's expensive, but you continued. You persisted. You said, Lord, I'm looking unto you for this business. One day, outside your community, God will send a man that will come to you and say, I have heard that your food is good. I want to have an event. I want to pay you 2.5 million naira. Can you come and prepare food for us in that event? And you'll be shocked. You'll be standing like this, like, you know, like zombie. He said, uh, did you hear me? He said, I'm, I'm trying to comprehend what I'm saying. Mm. Did you hear me? Because that's what your money, that, that, the, even to hear about 2.5 million, it has scattered you. It has scattered you. And yet that's what grace is able to do. A man of grace is unlimited. A man of grace is not restricted. A man of grace always looks above, not beneath. And then if you are under authority, the authority will tell you, say, look, follow this way. Follow this way, and it shall be well with you. Did you ever read Mark chapter 4? The Bible said, the parable of the sower. He said, a man went to sow. A man went to sow. A man went to invest. Praise the Lord. He says, some fell by the wayside. And what happened? The bird ate it. And some fell in the rocky places. Not having foundation, when the sun arrives, they died. Praise the Lord. And then some fell among the thorns. And when they grew, the thorns choked them and they died. And then some fell on the good ground. Praise the Lord. You know what? Number one, wayside. Number two, the rocky places. Number three, the thorny places. They didn't have a covering. And they couldn't flourish. It was the same seed planted in the same places, different places. But only one, the one on the good ground. You know what a good ground is? The soil was good. It has a covering. And the thorns and the sun and the bird couldn't come to touch it. You know why? Because the sower has planted at the right place. And you know what? It brought forth a harvest. Do you understand? Life outside the authority is like by the wayside. Of course, it's life by the wayside. Life without authority is like without foundation on the rocky places. Life without authority is like living among thorns. When they are choking you, there is no one to rebuke. There is no one to clear the thorns. There is no one to dig the foundation in the rocky places and make sure you are standing. You need to understand that submission is not just about being under authority. It's about being blessed under that authority. For the centurion said, I am a man under authority. Speak the word and my servant shall be healed. The moment you start saying I'm a man under authority, that authority becomes your defense and your shield. The Bible said the servant of that centurion was sick and ready to die. Without an authority over him, he would have died. Without an authority over him, he would have died. He was close to death. The centurion said, no, I don't want to lose my servant. He is like a son to me. He is a son to me. You come to a point where your service becomes so close to your master, and you become like a son to your master. When he talks about his sons, you come first. Because by service, you have penetrated into his heart. Praise the Lord. A few weeks ago, one of my uncles visited me here, a pastor. He came here. He came to see me with a fellow pastor. A fellow pastor. And we were talking about some things. So he introduced the pastor. And the pastor was, you know, nice and bubbling man. And we, you know, we fellowshiped together. And we had a breakfast together. And so, a week or two later, I called my uncle, I said, um, by the way, how is this pastor? He said, oh, oh. He said, he forgot to tell me. I said, tell me what? He said, last week. He said, last week, the same pastor that came here climbed the fourth floor. We had a meeting. 
Say he had an accident. Bedridden. Cannot move. Cannot ease himself. I said, what are you talking about? He said, yes. He said, the pastor that I came with, he had an accident. Now he's bedridden. He said to me, he said, the pastor has four children. Four. Four. He said, but there is another one, one child, that is not a biological, but adopted one. Adopted one. The pastor had four children, biological. One adopted. One adopted. He said to me, since the man has been in hospital, none of the four children has shown up. He said, it's the adopted one that stays with that man day and night. And I says to him, Daddy, if you poop, I will clean it. If you will, I will clean it. Because you cleaned me. Are you hearing me? Sometimes biological children have a lot of rights, they claim. Entitlement mentality. They believe that you are their father. You should pay everything. If you don't pay, woe will betide you. They will make you see pain. But the same child that was picked up from the gutter, cleaned and washed, looks back at the one that picked him from the gutter and said, this one, this one, I must love him. I must serve him. And he said to me, he said, he said, Pastor, I'm, I'm telling you, none of the four children shows up. It is the one that is adopted that's taking care of the man. I said, are you telling me the truth? He said, nothing but the truth. Meanwhile, you, in your life, you are holding on to my children, my children, my children. Good, hold on to them. Hold on to them. Just be sure that the day you need to hold on to something that they will be there. Submission. Paul called Timothy and Titus through son. Peter was writing, he said, my son Mark greets you. My son, John Mark, he said, my son greets you. Those that you begot in the scriptures are the truth. Praise the Lord. Those that you beget in the scriptures, they are what? The truth. Those you beget in the scriptures, they are the truth. And that's the truth. That's the truth. Anyone, anyone with a natural mind is rebellious against God. A natural mind is rebellious against God. You need to know this. A natural mind is an unsaved mind. A natural mind is a wicked mind. No matter how nice they are, anybody that is not saved, anybody that is not born again, their mind is wicked, full stop. Because sin is sin. When we talk about being under authority, it is an opportunity for you to prosper. It is an opportunity for you to flourish. Even if, in the case of Jacob, Laban didn't want him to be prosperous. Laban didn't want him to prosper. But God is greater than Laban. God saw the faithfulness of Jacob and made him to prosper. There is no faithful submission that God will not bless. There is no faithful submission that God will not bless. Young people, what is the problem with you? What is the problem? You are too much in a hurry. All you want to do is to make money. What can you do? Um, um, do you know how to cook? Not really. Do you know how to serve? Not really. Do you know how to drive? Not really. What can you do? I left school. I left school. Praise the Lord. How can a young person be without a job? You carry a phone that costs 60K, 60K, 60,000 Naira. To learn how to drive will cost you 40,000. Who is foolish? And so you are unemployed with a phone. For who? No, who should call you? 
No, who should we call you? Who are you expecting call from? And then you come to a church, you carry it. You say it's on silent. You don't have a job. Your phone is on in church, in the house of Jehovah. And then message, you come, pee, 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 boy, where, where are you coming, boy? The message is coming, you type in, a, give me a minute, service will soon be over. In church, pastor will soon finish, I will, I will join you. In the house of Jehovah, the only one that can show you mercy and bless you, even him, you can't give respect. Let's stand up and praise God, you sat down. Why is poverty posing? No. Why is poverty posing? Have you seen poverty doing cat work? <laughs> are, are, are you hearing me this morning? The color of your shirt, you, you raise it. You are feeling your shirt. You are walking like you are the owner of the road. What do you command? Emptiness. Even in emptiness, you are proud. What will happen if God will bless you? And so because money is an amplifier of character. So in poverty, you are untouchable. You are uncontrollable. And so we try, God will keep prosperity away from you unless you kill somebody. Viewpoint. Divine viewpoint is our calling. Let every soul be subject to authority. He says, submit yourself to one another. Praise the Lord. We saw in Ephesians chapter 5, we said that there's one scripture that every man knows. Wife, submit to your own husband. But verse 21 is still there. He says, submit to one another. That's what the Bible said also, isn't it? Yes. Submit to one another. You don't read that. You only read the one that says, wife, submit. I am the head. Let me tell you, when pastor gives instruction that you are husband, I can counter it. You are right in a way. You are right in a way that when a woman gets married and then the pastor gives instruction, you can also counter it because you are the husband, because you have empty head. That's why you only can, the only way you can counter the instruction of a man of God is your head is empty. Because if you have the fear of God, you dare not do it. You dare not do it. That's the truth. Praise the Lord. You dare not. And then we blame the woman that says, yes, I do with you. Why did, he agree, why did she agree to marry you? Because she wants to be Mrs. All my mates have gotten married. You want to get married. Do you need to marry to be Mrs.? No. Mrs. is a word. It's a letter. Put it in your name. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Yes. You don't need a husband to be Mrs. If you like the title so much, Mrs. Rachel. <laughs> Praise the Lord. No, what's wrong with that? It's a title, isn't it? You don't need a man to torture your spirit and have Mrs. attached to your name. In fact, as a matter of fact, you can put doctor to your name. Do you, do you get it? You can be a doctor by education. You can be a doctor by award. You can also be a doctor by claiming it. You don't need to explain the type of doctor you are. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Do you have to explain? You can be doctor of used clothes seller. <laughs> or used shoe. Or rice and beans. Doctor is a doctor. Are you hearing me this morning? It's a letter. D-R. D-R. You put your name. Doctor of what? Salad. <laughs> I make the best salad in town. Have you tried my salad? Who gave you a doctor? My community. How big is your community? My husband and wife. Do you have a problem with that? No. Hello? Hello? You don't need to go into bondage. You don't need to go into captivity because of a title. No, you don't need to. If you look at the parable of the sower in Mark chapter 4, 
you will never be outside authority. Because all that happened to the three seeds that was planted, they died. Even those that seem to come alive, they still died. When the Bible said, let every soul, let every soul, let every soul be subject to authority. It doesn't give us room to negotiate. As long as you are a living soul, the Bible says you should be under authority. You know, when we talk about authority, we only talk about the, the marriage, the home, where the, where the husband is the head. And I showed you last Sunday, before, you, the head, before your husband can be your head, the Christ, our Lord, should be the head of your husband. And you should, before you marry, you should inquire whose head is he carrying. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And I say to you, try and get a reference. Try and get a reference from the pastor before you say I do to the man. But the problem is that when women are in love, they don't understand. I don't know why it happens to them. When they say they are in love, they, they, they throw away reasoning. Say, this man does not love you. He said, don't worry, Papa, I know. I will manage. You will manage. You will manage. Your father talks wisdom to you. He buys you Kentucky Fried Chicken. You will forsake wisdom and embrace chicken. But chicken won't save your marriage. Amen? It is better for you to drink curry before you marry. And then after you have married, you eat chicken after. You sit in your father's house and say, I'm not going to marry you except I know who you are. I want to know who your friends are. I want to know who your parents are. I want to know who your pastor is. I want to know who your church is. Do you think that you are committing sin? Because you are going to put your entire life. I told you that submission is to relinquish control. Submission, fully explained, is to relinquish the control you have over your life and give it to somebody else. And so you take your entire life, give it to a 419er. Because you saw a big car and you saw a furnished apartment. And for you, and for you, ah, finally. Finally. Finally, a house I can call my own. You are not marrying the household. Praise the Lord. Submission to God is our calling. Submission to Christ is our calling. Submission to the Holy Spirit is our calling. Submission to the pastor is our calling. Submission to the church is our calling. Submission to the brethren is our calling. Choose the one you want. And unfortunately, there is no choice in them. You must follow them if you are a true Christian. You must follow them all. It's our calling. It's our calling. Pastor is calling your husband. You say, honey, please quickly go and see pastor. You don't know why he's calling you. He said, ah, but you, we've not eaten food. Go and see pastor. You don't know why pastor is calling you. I don't know you and this pastor. When he comes to a pastor, you just believe he is pushing you to life and light. And then you came to see pastor. Pastor, I said, wait. You waited one hour. Pastor didn't come out. You picked up the phone. Honey, you said, I told you. Go and see pastor. I've been here for one hour. Been here one hour. Nobody, no break light, not even a phone call from pastor. Me, me, I will wait 30 minutes, I will leave. You might as well go. You might as well go. Because to keep you, to keep you there is to deal with what you are calling about. To keep you waiting for one hour is the reason why you are waiting. So that lawlessness can be dealt with in your life. But no, you only there for one hour. 
and you were already angry. You were hungry, you were angry, and so you called your wife. You gave a bad report. I told you, pastors don't, know, don't understand time. Keep you here. They don't know that time is, time is money. How, how much have you made with your time? No, how much? I remember one time, Pastor Chris sent for me. Just that Pastor Chris sent for me, I was overjoyed. Ha! I was bubbling in my spirit. As I got to church, they said I should go directly to White House. I went to White House. That's already an honor to be in pastor's residence around that neighborhood if you know what to do. As I sat down with him, hey! I began to pray in tongues. You are talking about putting your phone off. I didn't even carry a phone. Are you hearing me? There are appointments that you must drop everything around you. Lest you be distracted by an Egyptian. And I was praying in tongues. I said, Lord, this meeting, ah, this meeting, as long as I will meet the man of God, I will not live here the same. I don't know how long I prayed. Maybe 30 minutes, 40 minutes I was waiting. I prayed my spirit to fire. And when the man of God came, the meeting was just about 15, 20 minutes, but it does something much greater in me. Something far more greater in me. Far more great than me. And when I was leaving that meeting, I believe I left twice the size I came. That's definitely at work. You have carried an anointing. You have carried grace. Praise the Lord. My father in the Lord came to Munich for holidays one time. And I was supposed to host him for that one week from Monday to Saturday because he leaves on Saturday morning. And that Monday he arrived, I put my phone off from that Monday. It's only when he said, can I call so, 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 I'll put my phone on. I will call, I will put it off. Because I don't expect any call higher than his call. Do you understand me? No, do you understand me? There is such a level of respect that you give to men of God that God will not fail to honor you. I'm telling you the truth. I went to buy a briefcase in Singapore. We entered the shop. We looked at the bags we wanted to buy. I said, I like this. Mommy was with me. And I said, I like it. I said, hey, hey. Better still, let me buy it for my father in the Lord. Mommy said, okay, you buy two. I said, no. My father and I cannot carry the same thing. I will buy the higher one for him. I will buy the lower one for myself. He is not there in Singapore. He's all the way in Abuja. He wouldn't know if I bought something for myself. But God will know. My problem is that God will know. And if I know that God will know, I am not only doing it for him, I'm doing it unto the Lord. Praise the Lord. I said, no. I cannot buy the same thing that I'm buying for my father in the Lord. You know what I did? I picked that for him. I picked a lower one. Cheaper one for myself. And you know what? The joy I had was unspeakable. The joy I had was what? Unspeakable. When you do the right thing spiritually, the first thing you will experience is joy on the inside. And when I delivered it to him, I knelt down, he blessed me. Amen? One time, a beloved brother blessed me with a watch, a very nice watch, expensive watch. I looked at him and said, wow. I thanked him. Next Sunday, I saw him wearing the same watch. So he bought one for me, bought one for himself. Praise the Lord. And I never wear that watch for once. Not once did I wear it. Not once did I wear it. I just throw it in there. When you treat your pastor at the same level with yourself, you are not under authority now. So you think both of you are equal. It doesn't work. And that is why many people give without receiving because the way you treat your pastor, you treat him at the same level with you and you treat the things of God at the same level with you. And so who will bless you? If you and your pastor is at the same level, who will bless you? The Bible said that which from above. If your pastor is not above you, how can he bless you? 
No, how can he bless you? It doesn't work like that. You need to place yourself under authority. Leave your lawlessness that God will bless you. I have told you examples in the scripture of those that God blessed only because they were in authority. They were treated unfairly. They were treated unjustly. They were treated harshly. But because of their obedience, even when their master didn't want to bless them, God blessed them. Because God is greater than any master. If you obey the word of God, God himself will act for you. Praise the Lord. When you, when you under authority and your pastor says you are blessed, you take it as a sure word. A sure word. A sure word. You take it as a sure word. Even whatever will happen to you, you said, I've been told I am blessed. You are quoting that they said, they said Nigeria is not good. They said the governor is not good. They said the president is not good. They said, they said. But have you ever, can you even remember what your pastor said? No, can you remember one thing that God said? Who are these people that said these things that you are living by? Perhaps they are lawless like you. And so their word you carry. Listen, listen. Don't say what they say. Say what God say. Amen? Amen. Don't say what they say. Say what? Say what God said. They say that the average life of, average life of Nigerians is 55 years. Ah, okay, how sad. I didn't know that. Hey, Nigerians are suffering. I'm not a Nigerian now. It doesn't apply to me. Amen? Amen? No, it doesn't. I'm not a Nigerian. Do I look like a Nigerian to you? It is very clear. The Bible said, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. The Bible said that our citizenship is from above. Our citizenship. Our citizenship. You know, Peter put it much, much better. Peter said that we are just sojourners here. Peter, in fact, one translation said that we are aliens here. We are visitors on earth. So why do you take citizenship of where you are a visitor? Have you seen somebody that went to a hotel and lodging for three days, and then after that you try to claim it as your house? You lodge into the hotel. They say, how long are you? They say, three days. They booked you. You paid. At the end of three days, you said, even within the three you said, I, I, I bought a room. I bought a room. My room is good. Are you not mad? You are mad. They will carry police and throw you away. Peter said that we are citizens on earth. Sorry, we are sojourners. We are visitors. We are aliens. That's what Peter said to us. He said, as sojourners, he said, the time we spend here, we should be careful. Let this place not make us our citizens. That's what Peter was saying. Don't let... Them make you like citizen. The Bible said that Lot went to Sodom. They tortured his soul because he was living out of contest. He was supposed to live under the authority of Abraham, but he moved to Sodom and he suffered. Though he was saved, but he lost all. He lost many things. He lost many things. Life outside the authority brings suffering. suffering. Look at the seed that was planted on the rock. They grew up. But because they had no foundation, the sun smite them and they died. Look at the one that was planted among thorns. What happened? What happened? They actually grew, but the thorns choked them to death. You can go and read that in Mark chapter 4 and get a revelation. And after you have read it, kneel down and say, Lord, I will never be lawless. I will never be outside authority. I want to be blessed. I want to prosper. I want to flourish. Job said to us, submit yourself to God so that prosperity will come to you. Why do you read the Bible and you don't say what the Bible says? You say what they say. They said this. They said that. They said that. They said that. And you are the one that hears it all. Praise the Lord. The reason why you don't see me walking around is because I don't like to hear what they say. 
Amen. Amen. If you are with me, you will hear what God says. Because the Bible said that those that come from God speak God's word. And those that are also from God will hear God's word. Praise the Lord. Today, today, as we take the communion, go for the change. Place yourself under authority. I'm begging you, stop your lawlessness. Have you not suffered enough? How is it that you have come to enjoy suffering? No, how is it that you have come to enjoy suffering? You look at yourself and say, you know, after all, <laughs> I'm drinking gary with peanut and sugar. There are people that don't drink with anything at all. <laughs> and so you say, I'm still better. I'm still better. They say, how? You say, ah, when I drink gary, I have, I have peanuts. I have sugar. When I jam them together, you need to test it. <laughs> are you serious? Are you serious? I do not dispute the fact that drinking gari may be a delicacy to you. But it should be a delicacy, not a hunger stopper. Amen. I don't have anything against drinking gari. <laughs> I think the last one, the last time I had such thing was in 1980. 1981 or 82, yes. No, 1981. 1881. Yeah, because 82, I was already out of this country. Praise the Lord. That was the last time I drank gari. Are you saying that it's not a delicacy for me, but there are higher delicacies? Amen. Amen. There are levels of delicacies. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And you too should upgrade in your delicacy. Amen. Amen. There are people that have special shawarma as delicacy. They say, I just want to give myself a say, make shawarma with full chicken, not with vegetable. <laughs> Even in shawarma, there are levels. John, is, where is he? Is that not true? <laughs> Doctor of shawarma. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> Dr. John. Dr. John can tell you the different types of shawarma. There's one with vegetable. There's one with hot dog. There's one with only chicken inside. And they have different prices. Are you hearing me? So even in, in prosperity, there are levels. Amen. Allow God to bless you. Allow God to bless you. All this, I know who I am. Who are you now? I know who you <laughs> Please tell us, who, who are you? Apart from living in face me, I face you. Who else are you? Amen. Amen. He said, oh, this is pastor, I say, you know, nobody will give me a wife. Me. I will find my wife. I will marry my wife. I will find Meanwhile, your girlfriend has robbed you of everything you have. Angelina, dealt with you. You couldn't cry. You couldn't tell your friends. You said, we broke up. <laughs> we, you didn't break up. She broke you. Praise the Lord. Angelina broke you to pieces. You can't even tell the story. What happened to Angelina? Boy, I don't want to talk about that girl. Though. But me, I've moved on. She moved on with all your assets. And you are still saying nobody will give you a wife. Who thinks, do you think I want to give you a wife? You Rambo. <laughs> Me, give you a wife. For what? Do you know the honor and the privilege for a pastor to bring his daughter and say, marry her? You, give you one. You are joking. Even if I hear you are interested in one, I will cut it. <laughs> are you hearing me? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Somebody came one time and wants to marry my daughter. I said, I don't know you who you are in the spirit. He said, Pastor, but you know me. I said, yeah, I know you as a person. But I don't know you in the spirit. Who are you in the spirit? He said, he does not understand. I said, I don't know you in the spirit. He said, Pastor, can you explain? I said, yeah, I don't know you. <laughs> Praise the 
Praise the Lord. We only commit eternal things, eternal values, only to those we know, only to those God knows, only to those that have a good testimony. That's the truth. Are you hearing me? The other day I asked a question. I said, how about Brother Levi? He was not there. I just said, how, how is Brother Levi? He's here. He's the head of the worship. I just said, how is Brother Levi? And I got such a wonderful testimony about him. Praise the Lord. That's the way it should be. When you are a pastor, we ask those that should know about you, about you, they should give a good report. He didn't know about it. And then based on that report, I did something for him. Even when he received it, he was shocked. Were you not shocked? Praise the Lord. And it's just the beginning. There is no way God will not reward faithfulness. The one they call you, they say you disappeared. You were just there. You had your name. You ran away and hid. You think you are smart. He said, Mommy wants to send me to market for waiting. Full grown man. Go to market. Fagba market. They don't have respect in this church. Carry your respect. Carry your respect. Praise the Lord. You just had your name, Victor. You disappeared. He said, he said, he was just here. He was just here. Mommy, we were just talking now. And you said to yourself, they don't know I'm smart. Mommy does not know I'm smart. I'm smarter than all of them. We will see at the end. Praise the Lord. Let me not continue. Because the more I continue, I will bring out the things you don't want people to hear from you. Praise the Lord. 